Hi everyone, welcome to today's broadcast and whoever is listening, would you please make some comments and let us know that you're out there. We're watching to see who's commenting and who's there. I believe this message is going to help you and it's going to encourage you. I'm Ginger Ziegler with Embracing His Grace and we're going to talk about today, where do we go from here? We've had some bumpy roads the last couple of years in uh, America, but we've some of us individually have had some bumpy roads for the last few years. So, you know, you get to the place of where do we go from here? And, and I've told this story so many times, you know, if you had kids, you had this experience. As soon as you get in the car, are we there yet? Well, we're not there yet, <laughs> but we are on the way. And so you get into a place and you think, Lord, what is going on? I don't know if y'all are thinking about that, but I think most everybody is. What's happening? What's happening since we had the election and even the last year that President Trump was in? You know, what was going on? And so I want to share just a little bit where we are uh, in this battle that we're in, in this war that we are winning in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we, first of all, we got to win it spiritually. Everything happens from the spirit realm into the natural realm. And so there are several uh, prophecies and prophets in the Old Testament that we can look at and if we learn how to read from the Old Testament uh, in type and shadow, then we can kind of see where we are today. And so I'm going to talk to you about Haggai, or y'all might call it Haggai, whatever you call him. And uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Habakkuk. And so, but what we want to go, I have to tell you this to begin with. We've got to understand the power of the blood and resurrection. We have got to have things resurrected in our nation. They're changing our constitution quickly every single day. Things are changing, stuff is happening, and we've got to have, where well, we have power and authority, and we really have faith to believe for resurrection, for things that, that have been uh, maybe killed or died, or you never, you never thought they would ever come back again. It seems like they were buried in a grave or whatever. We've got to have those dreams to come back. That American dream, that dream of God for this nation, spreading the gospel all over the world, for this gospel that and this freedom that we have here to affect your life. So some things, God, we've got to get to where we have revelation in this uh, resurrection, and it's all connected to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is absolutely a must for today. That's how we're going to turn things around spiritually. And anyway... Well, we are right now. I want to talk about this in 2 Thessalonians 3. And you've all heard this, that we would be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, from all men, for all men don't have faith. But the Lord is faithful. That's the part where right now we've got all these crazy things happening in our nation and all over the world. But the Lord is faithful, and he will establish you, and he will keep you from evil. And one translation says he will rescue you from evil. So things are happening every single day. We hear something different in the news. We hear that this is going to happen, that's going to happen, they're going to do this or that. And so we've got to have faith and, and believe, hey, these things are going on, but God is going to establish us. We're going to get to where we're established. We're not going to be moved. Every time some wind blows, it's not going to bother us. We're going to say, no, this is what God said. This is what the prophets are saying, and this is where we're going, and this is how it's going to be. Now, we may not be there yet, but where do we go from here? And this present administration has only been in there in just a short while, and look at all the changes that have been made, and there haven't been good changes. And so we're, how are we going to get this buggy turned around? And sometimes, you know, the bigger the thing is, the longer it takes to turn around. But we're going to get it turned around. And I want to talk about Haggai. He said in Haggai uh, chapter 2 and verses 6 through 8, and you've heard this before, the Lord of hosts. Now, when we say the Lord of hosts, we get, we're talking about the Lord that has over all the angels, Michael and all the angels, the host, all the angelic help. There's more of them. Then there are the demonic forces. So we got to keep mm -hmm. that in our mind. Because remember when he, he opened up the servant's eyes and he looked up and he said, Oh, wow, Master, look up there. He said, there's, there's chariots and horses and fire and angels and everything. There's more with us than there are with them. So we have to keep our faith at that level. we got to stay at that level. Yet once more in a little while, I will shake. Now once more in a little while, we're going to talk about a little while. I will shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry ground. Now, we know things are shaking now. We've heard prophecies by 
Pastor Kuhnman and different people about all these earthquakes and all this stuff that's going on. So there's a lot of shaking going on. When the earth starts shaking in the natural, we know that he, God, is shaking the nations and the desire of all the nations will come. Now, this is a forerunner if we can see ahead. See, this is where we got to be able to see what God is saying. We've got all this shaking. we got all this stuff going on, all this evil mess that's going on. But yet at the same time, all this shaking is going, it should not shake us because we should be established in the things of God. Yet in a little while, we don't know what a little while is, but a little while might be a day, might be an hour. I've been studying an hour, a day, a, a month, a week, a year. I've been looking at some of these things in the scriptures, like when he says in a little while, and I told this story before he told, this is way back in 79, he told me one time in the middle of the night, about a little while and the little while turned out to be, it was three o'clock in the morning the little while turned to be turned out to be eight o'clock that day so it was only five hours and i said man i can do a little while anytime we ever have to do this this is not too bad at all so but that's not always the case sometimes a little while is longer than that but he says in a little while things are going to start happening and so when things start things start shaking we got to remember this part this part is that that he said, I will fill this house with my glory, says the Lord. The silver is mine, the gold is mine. So we've got this financial thing that's going on in our nation. Things are changing. I don't know if you keep up with what's going on. If any of you've got savings account and bank and, you know, stocks and bonds and real estate or whatever, you can pay attention to what's going on. But there's this shaking going to start happening, which is happening right now. But he wants us to say, wait just a second. The, when the shaking starts, <clears throat> we need to be looking for the glory of God. We need to be looking to see the glory and the outpouring and the manifestation of God. Now, there are people that think they're going to do this and that and the other thing with our finances. And they have the power to do this and whatever. But... This verse right here says, hey, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. It belongs to me. And it does. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof actually belongs to God. Okay, so that's good to know because that will help you in your faith if the financial structure starts shaking. See, you can stay steady. Wait just a second. They're not be saying this or that or the other thing, but it all belongs to God. We've got to remember it all belongs to God, and he's going to give it to those he wants to give it to. To. So whoever he chooses, that's how it's going to be. So Habakkuk goes on to say that I'm going to do a work in your day that you wouldn't even recognize. Something is going to happen when this starts shaking. You know, he said, I'm going to go up and I'm going to sit on my watch. I'm going to find out what's going on. I'm going to look ahead. I want, and this is repeated in Acts 13. This is really interesting. It says the same thing. Acts 13 in his verses 40 and 41 says the same thing. I'm going to do a work that you wouldn't even believe and so now we got to hold on to that so here's this shaking here's all this stuff happening it looks like this impending evil is taking over and all this stuff is there like we're going to take your money away and they're going to do this and that and the other thing but god says wait a minute the gold is mine the silver is mine and when shaking starts happening you've got to remember i'm ready to pour out of my spirit the glory of god on all flesh so we've got to look past these things that are happening now we, we're not going to act like they're not happening but we've got to see past that and say wait a minute we're waiting for the glory of god we're praying for the glory of god we believe that the earth is the lord's and the fullness there we believe god's going to take care of us because he said he would establish us so we got to get there. We got to we got to see further down the road than what we're looking right now. Cuz Habakkuk what he did or Habakkuk some of y'all people call him that. Anyway, I'm from Texas. I can call him Habakkuk if I want to, okay? <laughs> anyway, um he he got up there on his watch and he said, "Do you see what's going on, God? Have you ever done that in prayer? <laughs> Have you ever gone to your prayer closet and go, did you know what they said today, what they did today? Do you know what they're doing? Oh, I'm sure you have. Well, anyway, he did it. And he said, don't you see all this injustice going on? Don't you see all this stuff that's happening? God, aren't you paying attention? 
It's like all this wickedness is going on, 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 and we're not doing anything about it. So he was busting up a boomstorm, is what we'd say from Georgia. He was just busting up, and he said, it's just like all these wicked are just running loose. Have you noticed that in America? Okay, like, they're like somebody restrain this group of people that's carrying on like this. And so, but what happens, he says, he goes on to say, justice has been twisted or bent out of shape. But God is the God of justice. He is the God of justice. And so because he is the God of justice, justice is coming. Justice is going to come. It's going to come. It's going to happen. And so <clears throat> when he got all this, got through all this complaint and everything, what was happening, the prophet wasn't seeing far enough down the road. Now, thank God we have prophets today like Pastor Kuhneman, Kenneth Copeland, some of these different ones, and they're seeing further down the road. They're saying, yeah, all this stuff is happening, but what's coming is the glory of the Lord. What's coming in is justice. God's going to turn this thing around. Hang on. Stand. Make your decrees. Believe God. Don't be moved by all this stuff that's going on. You be established in the things of God. Live by faith. Be established in this, this thing that God is doing. He's going to do something. He's not just sitting up in heaven going, well, I wonder what's going on down on earth. I wonder what's happening in the United States. He knows exactly what's happening. And he knows how to pray those things out. He knows when we pray those things out, he knows how to make them work out. And so he tells us certain things to pray and a certain way to pray them. So anyway, we've got to get our eyes off the immediate problem. It's not me, my four, and no more. I'm sure you got problems. I know there are people out there that's got sickness. they got bad reports from doctors. I get constant every day, just all day long sometimes, people... Please pray this person is sick. Please pray this person has, has cancer. Please pray this bad thing just happened. Please pray they can't find their teenager. They can't find this. Just, it's constant. So I know bad things are happening. I worked for, co for this company for 30 years, and now they laid me off, and I'm not even going to get my retirement. I know people like that, too. And so I'm not minimizing that. I really, I'm not. Man, I've had my day of troubles, I can tell you. And so I, I know what that's like. But at the same time, we got to look past this. This just life is temporary. I mean, now you see us, now you don't. How long can we live here, you know? I mean, that we, we're talking about things of eternity. And when God starts working on things that are eternal, sometimes it takes a little while to get them worked out in us and get them worked out in our nation. So what we got to do is start seeing past the problem Pass the problem. Anybody listening to me? Pass the problem. We gotta see beyond the problem so that we can see the answer. We gotta be able to get to a place where we can see, wait a minute, here comes the answer. Here is the answer. I've got to focus on what God said. I got to focus on what's written in the scriptures. I gotta sit on my watch, but I'm not just watching for all the yucky stuff that's happening. I gotta see Jesus is coming in. And I always laugh sometimes. I tell people, I say, well, I'm waiting for Jesus to come riding in on that white horse. <laughs> you know, I'm waiting for him to come in big time, you know, like really tough. And so we got to start looking for that because, because what happens is we, if we just see the problem and we don't see beyond tomorrow, we don't see it beyond the divorce. We don't see beyond being laid off at the job. We don't see beyond going to the next level we don't see beyond what the doctor has to say and we don't see beyond that what's going to happen is we're going to we're going to be nearsighted all of you but we've got to look further down and see wait a minute here comes the lord he is going to come he's going to change this things are going to change and you know what peter said peter said he said do you think this is weird all this stuff is happening to you he said this is happening to people all over the world at the same time. You you haven't been handpicked out for all this problem. Peter was saying, get a grip. The devil is mean, and he just doesn't like anybody who loves Jesus. In fact, he doesn't like anybody, period. I mean, he doesn't matter if they're saved or not. You know, he's just mean. He's just plain mean. So then he says, wait, now what we've got to do is we've got to see this accurately. And what we've got to see accurately is what is actually going on. 
We've got to look out there. Wait a minute. We've got a covenant with God. It's an eternal covenant. It's written in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's for sure. He didn't make this covenant. He made it between himself and then let us in on it. He didn't try to make it with us because he knew that wasn't going to work. So he made it with himself, him. Then he said, Abraham, I'm going to give it to you, and then you can give it on. And so that's what exactly is happening. We, wait a minute. He is, he's not going to break his covenant. He's going to keep his covenant. I don't know exactly how I'm going to get out of this situation. I don't know exactly where it's going to be. But, I mean, sometimes, yeah, we cry. I mean, here's Terry in here helping me do this right here. <laughs> we were building my house. Still building my house. It's not finished yet. It's almost finished. But there'd be times we work something. I'm, I'm serious. We work like Terry and Sharon and, and uh, Ben, several of us. We work sometimes 18 hours trying to get this house done because I was building it myself. Well, not myself. I was building it with all of them. <laughs> but anyway... I would just get so tired sometimes I'd just cry. But when I, I mean, I'd cry for a minute or two and I would, I'd get myself straightened up and i go, okay, <laughs> this is not as big as it seems like it is. Because see what happens is we do have those moments of emotion, but then we're, wait a minute, we've got to have a reality check. God's bigger than this. He's bigger than this situation I'm in. All right, what if I made the right decision? What if I made the wrong decision? God is still bigger than the right decision or the wrong decision. And so we got to see past, like where Habakkuk was only seeing all this evil that was happening. we got to see beyond that. We have God, and he keeps covenant. And he helps us to keep the covenant. And so when Habakkuk got to that place, it was really interesting if you read the whole thing. He sat down, and he says, then I'm going to start writing the vision, and I'm going to make it plain. Everybody that runs past is going to be able to read it and see, yes, this is how it's going to turn out. He finally got to his senses, and that's what you need to get. You need to get to your senses. I need to get to my senses because prophets today are prophesying. They're, we're writing down whatever uh, Pastor Kuhneman, when he prophesied something, or Kenneth Copeland or some of these other people, uh, Mario Morello and these different ones, we write it down, and we're holding on to it. Okay, this is what God is saying. Well, did you know what they're doing? This is what God is saying. Did you know what they did yesterday? This is what God is saying. Do you know what it looks like tomorrow? This is what God is saying. Oh, my God, what are we going to do? This is what God is saying. See, you have to have an anchor. You can't, I mean, listening to all the stuff that's going on. I mean, it's not, I mean, listening to all the bad reports. Uh, it's not, gonna, that's not an anchor. You've got to have an anchor. And so the prophets today, it, it takes time. It takes patience. We have to pray these things out. It's not something that just happens overnight. Some Once in a while, there's a prophecy come to pass, you know, in a hurry. But most of the time, it's not going to come in a hurry. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab hold of what God is saying so that we can live a life of security, where we can live a life secure, not necessarily in stuff that's going on around us, but what's going on in us. We live by faith. By the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. We, we see that we believe, Psalm 91, I'm hidden in that shelter, that almighty arms of God. I got this hiding place. I'm hidden with Christ inside God. Satan can't find me. You see, we've got to get a hold of that and we can see that God cares about what's going on and God's doing something. But you know, a whole bunch of this stuff we don't understand. Judgment is coming. Justice is coming. It's going to happen. But we got to see he brings forth mercy. That's what he's crying out. His blood is crying out for mercy. And so we've got to see the glory of God is coming, and we are going to prevail. And I'm telling you what I need to hear. Sometimes I need to hear this myself. i got people that I call, and I go, hey, I need you to encourage me right now. And they go, well, this is what you preached last time. <laughs> they give me back my own words. And so you just hang on here. So we just got to see, and this is funny, in this Habakkuk chapter 3, I've shared this before. This is Pastor Kuhnman. He, I think it was a few months ago, maybe it was last year, he had a prophecy about Jesus putting his big feet down on the United States. Well, it's in, it's in Habakkuk, it's in Habakkuk chapter 3. It says that he comes bounding across the land like a giant. <laughs> That's what it says. And all of a sudden, Habakkuk looks up and he goes, Oh, my, look at the size of this God we serve. And then he started saying, Oh, the glory of God. 
See, he started seeing different when he saw God as a giant coming across our land. So when I heard Pastor Clinton prophesy that, that's what I thought. I thought of that chapter. I thought, man, he's got big feet. When he puts his feet down on this earth, something starts shaking and happening. But we see him as this giant coming to us. And it really causes the fear of God to rise up in us. And you're going to see that. I can just tell you, I'm not going to prophesy to you, but I know what's happening. It's going to happen. The fear of God, the reverential fear of God is going to come on us. And when the body of Christ and even people who are not born again, people in our nation, people at the White House, the fear of God is coming to them. Not to be scared of God, but to get in a place to where we honor his holiness. And we honor his power and his authority. And we know that he is the supreme judge. He is the almighty God. He is the one that has made this earth. He's the one that started and he is going to finish it. And so when we start having that proper fear of God, as that happens, then you're going to see this outpouring of the glory of God. And I've shared this over and over. The glory of God is going to come up out of you. And gonna come up out of me. That's where the glory of God is going. Because we're gonna get in this place where we say, God, whatever you say, that's how it's gonna go. Whatever you're, whatever you tell me, then that we're gonna, we're just gonna keep on saying the right things. We're gonna keep on believing the right things. We're gonna keep on speaking the right things, and we're gonna see this power of God beginning to manifest. You just wait. You know, when they went in to take over uh, Canaan land, they went to Jericho. The fear of God was in those giants' face. They had to go in and take giants down, but the fear of God went first. You watch it, it's gonna happen. And so I just wanna encourage you that it's time for victory. It's time for true repentance on our part of the places where we haven't been like we should have been. And, but it's time for us to get to a place where we honor and reverence the Lord, that he is the Lord God Almighty, and he is the Lord of hosts. And there are more with us than there are against us. So until next week, but I want to share with you. I think I told you maybe last week. I'm not sure if I did or not. You're going to have my little book, Conquering Fear. This is really good for today since we're hearing all this stuff on the news and everything. It's just a little teaching book. If you want to write to the ministry, you're more than welcome to get this. And you can get a copy of my notes. I hope I don't have typos in it, but they may. But anyhow, Jessica picks them up and you can just ask for them and get on our email mailing list and so we're praying for the nation we're praying for you i spend my time praying 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 for people because i truly believe god puts us here and he tells us certain things and as we pray out those things then later on we see the manifestation begin to take place and things begin to change instead of being fearful we go no i'm going to change that that's what i'm going to do i'm going to change that I'm going to go in this place in prayer. I'm going to use the authority and the power that Jesus Christ has given me. And I'm going to speak his blood. You can get this from Amazon. I'm going to speak what the blood says. And then we're going to watch the devil tremble. James says he trembles. We're going to watch him tremble. Amen. And we're going to watch our God come and rise in victorious, the glory of God outpouring. And this move of God's going to go to the ends of the earth, just like God said. Father, we just ask you right now. To come and bless these people, encourage them, Lord. I know some of them are broken hearted and they're crying tears, but I'm asking you, Lord, you know how to do this. You know exactly how to touch that place in their heart and heal them. Lord, to bring them encouragement. Say the exact words that they need to hear that just causes them to wipe away their tears, Father. And they look up and they say, look. I see God bounding across America. He looks like a giant to me. And so I know he's coming to protect me and take care of me and my family. Father, give them that kind of vision and give them that kind of revelation and understanding that you are their father and you're going to take care of them in Jesus' name. Well, until next week, God bless. I'll see you later.